welcome back. The pomp and pageantry of the Platinum Jubilee is over and what a whirlwind it has been. The royal family and supporters worldwide celebrated the Queen's 70-year reign with performances, parades and heartfelt tributes. We've even dressed like old, you know, old you know, blighty today, you and I. We haven't, haven't yes, us. we have. A little bit of I that. Uh, let's go to uh, Nine Honey's Royal commentator, Natalie Oliveri. Nat, you didn't wear white, which would have been perfect. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, get the memo. I've got a little bit of it, blue and white. Yeah. Um, let's see, it's a four-day festivities. I mean, do you have a highlight? Oh, I loved every moment. This okay. Is <laughs> I love that we've gone from Michelle <laughs> to the complete Look, opposite. It was just incredible, but one of my favourite moments was Her Majesty with Paddington Bear at Buckingham Palace. That was the best. Before the, it was just so she's unexpected. So and it shows her sense of humour that we, we know she's got. But for me, she finally revealed what was in that handbag. Mm. So it was just such a nice moment. And I loved also towards the end of this skit when she starts tapping her teaspoon yep. to Queen's We Will we Rock, rock you. you. In time. Yeah. In time. Perfect beat. How amazing was that? I just thought that was such a special moment. I liked and it more than Bond. Is that is oh, it? No, no, I agree. I liked one, it more yeah, than Bond. Yeah, definitely. The Bond thing is one of my favourite ever Queen moments. So this came very close. Oh, to it. okay. It, yeah, but I mean Daniel Craig as well. So uh, yeah. yeah, I'm a big Paddington <laughs> head. <laughs> yeah. I'd like him to be the next Bond. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> be I just wanted to know what was in her sandwich. Was it it's marmalade. Marmalade. Oh, wait, does does yes. hers have to be marmalade? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. Oh, I was but hoping it was veggie mite or something. Did she put butter with that? Veggie mite. <laughs> not that, she doesn't love the colonies that much. But I also loved the, the concert itself and just the way the images were projected onto the it palace was walls. The colours, the lights, it was just amazing. All the performers, Duran Duran, one of my favourites, Queen, you know, someone for everyone at this concert, I think, mm. of all ages. And it was really fun to see the royal family rocking out as well and the little kids singing oh, along yes. to the songs. I mean, good on Prince George and Princess Charlotte for knowing the words to some of these Queen songs and also Rod Stewart. It was really fun. And... <laughs> Also, I think, to me, another very special moment was on Sunday, at the very end, when Her Majesty appeared on the Buckingham Palace balcony with her three heirs. It was just the perfect close to the event, a really special moment. And you could just see in the Queen's face how in awe she was by the turnout there. And um, really nice to see her, I guess, start the celebrations and also finish it. Nice yeah. bookend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As you mentioned there, it, the Cambridge kids really stole the show, though. We had George at the Jubilee concert. We had Louis at the pageant and then all three of them um, baking. I mean, they were just adorable. This was really much, I guess, the Queen showing off her ears and the Cambridges are at the centre of that. Now, it was really nice to see the kids out and about. We saw them here at the concert and, and again singing along to the lyrics and waving the flags. They just look so cute. And then we saw Prince Louis here. Oh my goodness. Look Love at him. This. Attitude <laughs> to the max, I think. <laughs> but he's four. But, you I know, mean, look at her telling him off to them. Just watch the damn show, kid. Absolutely. And, you know, Kate would be absolutely fuming inside oh, yeah. and just wanting oh. to keep her composure as her son's doing this in front of but the But we've campus. all been there as parents. <laughs> we I sure tell you have. that. We've all been there. And wasn't it just so sweet when he then ran and sat on his grandfather's lap, Prince Charles? I thought yes. it was such a sweet moment. And it really just shows how close these royals are as a family. And then, of course, we got an insight into uh, baking with the Cambridges when Kate shared those photos preparing cupcakes for a, a tea party, a platinum party in Wales. This was a really nice insight. She's spoken about baking with her children in the past, but never have we seen it actually taking place. And then Harry and Meghan were back, uh, but as they agreed to, kept a low profile. They did. Surprisingly, they did stick to that. Um, look, we saw them just the once in public here at the uh, service of Thanksgiving at St Paul's Cathedral. Look, they were on the other side of the church to the Cambridges. They were seated a few rows back, certainly showing their new place in the royal family. But, um, I think it was sad that there wasn't any interaction between Prince William and his brother. Uh, you could sort of see a bit of strain on Harry's face, I think. But, look, it was a nice celebration. It wasn't about them. It was about the Queen. And I think that it was a good thing that they did sort of keep to themselves for the rest of the weekend. They did their duty. They did, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Nat. Good to see you. Thank you. So yeah. glad you had a fun time with it. It was. Sorry that the party's over. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Thanks, Nat. Now, on that huge outpouring of support for the Queen overnight, Her Majesty making a surprise appearance to wrap up the four-day Platinum Jubilee celebrations, which mark her 70-year reign. And royal author and consultant to the Netflix series The Crown, Robert Lacey, joins us now in London. Robert, it's been an incredible milestone and when, one we may never see again. The celebrations, I thought, were really friendly and fun. What did you make of them? Absolutely. And what you said there, Leila, 
you know, never see again. Of course, that, that lent a poignant note to everything. Um, uh, I mean, you expect a bit of British eccentricity. Uh, we're looking here at the uh, parade this afternoon um, of, with, with cars demonstrating different eras. Each, each vehicle was supposed to represent a decade of a Majesty's reign. And of course, there have been seven of them. There are the Daleks. And um, uh, one of the weird things about the culture of the second Elizabethan age um, is that um, Elizabeth herself, the Queen, um, it, it's not really what you think of as a very adventurous or funky or unusual person. Um, but the culture that's been produced in, in her time um, in Britain um, uh, uh, has been rather the opposite. Here she is in bright green. Um, um, you know, this is a wonderful example of her signature clothing. Um, Everybody thinks of the first Queen Elizabeth as, as, as dressing theatrically. Well, there are not many ladies in their 90s who wear bright lime green and a hat like that. But yes. uh, that's she, a queen and we love her. She looks pretty funky to me. Let's talk about William and Harry. What did you make of their interaction or, or lack thereof? And how did, the queen, how did the crowd receive Harry and Meghan? Um, well, they're not our most popular folks anymore, I'm afraid. Um, William and uh, and Kate are the top of the pops, um, and it was very interesting the way in which um, at the uh, at the ceremony, although Harry and Meghan were given a sort of mini procession of their own, they they were put on the wrong side, and you can on the other side of the aisle from the important royals, and you could you could just see in that little clip you had there how Harry really wasn't very pleased. He understood um, where he was being seated back in the ranks of the more junior folk. And um, uh, it was very interesting that after the ceremony, here they are leaving, um, he and Meghan declined the invitation of the Lord Mayor of London to join all the other bigwigs and have a party. They just went off somewhere on their own. So the split is there, I'm afraid. It's, it's definite. Um, and um, if there's bad feeling on Harry's side, um, I think it, we, it, it is reciprocated on Williams because William feels that um, uh, his brother has, uh, has cut out and left him to do all the work. And when it comes to Prince Harry, I guess it's a case of be careful what you wish for because uh, you might get it there on the other side of the aisle. You know, how do you think uh, the, meet, the Queen's first meeting with young Lilibet would have gone? I guess behind the scenes, they are a family, even though they're the royal family. Yes, I mean uh, the, the queen. One of the things we've discovered from the the family tension is that in fact the queen has really a close relationship with with Harry, um, and um, uh, as of course she does with William. We now realise that following the death of Diana, the queen became a sort of foster mother to those boys. I mean Camilla um, was never high in their affections, um, and in fact. Between um, William and his grandmother, there exists a very strong bond. I mean, you, you could say that in the future, William, as a monarch, is going to model himself more on his grandmother than on his, his, his father. Um, uh, but the other thing we've seen from these ceremonies is the way in which Charles and William do operate as a team. And the Queen has almost deliberately stepped back, we feel, to show how the future of the monarchy lies with her son and grandson. Well, her Not so much that. Oh, sorry. It sorry. will come as a massive shock when the Queen is no longer there. I mean, she's been the Queen for, for generations of people. Robert Lacey, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you for joining us there at the end of this extravaganza. Thank you very much.